first rule of real estate is don't prejudge anyone by the way they look, what they drive, or anything. You just don't know. This guy turned in to be, you know, the same thing would happen when I start working with celebrities. My biggest client was Rock Nation, and I didn't prejudge this kid that was buying a house in Lakeside. Mm -hmm. $400,000 house turned into working with the biggest music celebrities in the world because I didn't prejudge him. Wow. I took his word for it. I, you know, I trust but verify. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> and then you give them, like you said, the service that you would give, yeah. doesn't matter who they are. Yeah. I may have never heard of you. You're going to get the service I give to the most famous people. Yeah, and his mom saw that, and she, she's the one that... Hi, welcome back to the Compass Studio. Today, my guest is Todd Armstrong. Really interesting agent. I'm really glad you're here. We're going to have a great conversation. Thank you. Welcome. <laughs> Good to be here. So um, let's start off with something easy. Tell me, where did you grow up? I grew up in Covington, Kentucky, which is right outside of Cincinnati, Ohio. Mm -hmm. um, and I left there in 1986, joined the Navy at 17 years old, and turned 18 in boot camp, and then found my way out to San Diego in 1990. So you mean you had a big party at 18 in boot yeah, camp? Yeah, in boot camp, yeah. <laughs> And this is how you discover San Diego. That is. That's, I got transferred out here. I worked on the F-14 Tomcats at Miramar. Mm -hmm. So BF-211, a couple other squadrons there. So when you got out of the Navy, where were you physically? What? I was here in San Diego. Um, oh. But I also, it was in 2009, I retired. I did 23 years. Mm -hmm. um, but all my retiree buddies all started working for General Atomics. Um, so the drone program, you know, mm -hmm. so... They convinced me. They're like, come on, work with us for about three years. I'm like, well, I'm I have my real estate business. I don't really want to work. You had started the, uh, the real estate while you were still in the military. Yeah, you yeah. You got your I, license. I got did that part-time okay. for 10 years because I wanted it to be set up when I got out. Right, right. There's plenty of referrals and things like that. So I planned ahead. But then I joined General Atomics, and I was running a full-time real estate business back here. And three weeks later after joining them, I'm in Iraq and um, oh, yeah, running, running the drone program over there. So I did that for three years, turned quickly into five years. Wow. And then I transfer from there to Afghanistan. And I was gone. Like I'd go for three months and I'd come back for two months and gone for three months, come back for two months. At that time I worked for a broker in, in Mission Hills and <clears throat> he would look at me and go, man, you're selling more real estate from Afghanistan than all my agents <laughs> in my office combined. I was like, as long as I have you here on the ground, you can show properties. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll send you business. You know? So that's how we worked it. So you were just staying in touch with people even from over there. Yeah. I was doing deals and writing offers from Afghanistan. Wow. Yeah. You were over there as a, that's what's called a private contractor? Is I that... was a private contractor, worked for the government, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, just taking out terrorists. That's all we did was hunt down terrorists. <laughs> so a job you enjoyed. I did enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. I still miss it every once in a while. And then every year they try to recruit me, try to get me back. And I'm like, no, it's okay. <laughs> now this is because you're running a very successful real estate business. Right. Not. You're done. No, I'm done. I'm doing yeah, this. I'm tired of being shot at and mm -hmm. mortars and rockets and things like that. It's got to be funny to you talking to agents who talk about, oh, the worst thing that ever happened last week. Yeah. <laughs> you Try have a mortar, mortar round coming right. in. <laughs> a, a little different idea rounds. of what a bad day is. <laughs> exactly. The escrow canceled. Not a bad it's day not yet. Not a bad day yet. <laughs> I just had one canceled today. But you have a lot of perspective is what it sounds oh, yeah. like. Yeah, 100%. That's got to be one hell of a tool that you're able to bring to your clients. Yep, um, which is we're getting ready to launch a new division within. Uh, I've always had it as our military division. Mm -hmm. um, more to come about that. I can't really talk about it yet. It's oh, not I was going to ask you about that, but there is a there's something in a the very works. special coming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, you got teased here first. We'll we'll have more later. Yep. Exactly. Um, you also have another division that you're heavily involved in. Yep, the sports and entertainment division. Um, when I was at my previous company, I was their executive director of sports and entertainment. Mm -hmm. um, all that means is I work with you know, some celebrity clients and professional athletes, um, a lot in L.A. Not, we don't have a team here anymore. So, right. um, so yeah, so I joined Compass mainly because of that, because they have an actual national network. There's 125 of us nationwide, mm -hmm. and we specialize in working with celebrities and, and, and professional athletes. So... In fact, I just finished a conference in New York last weekend with them. So just putting together our vision, our mission statement, getting it all ready. 
So this is something where you guys come together, I assume, and share. There's somewhat specialized knowledge. There's ways to do yeah. things that the, the average residential agent isn't dealing with. Right, because you're dealing with managers, brokers, attorneys, all these middlemen, you know, mm -hmm. to try to – and then it's white glove service from coast to coast. So like, you know, we try to keep it as seamless as possible. Um, when I do a referral, I just recently had one in Miami, so I called Ben Moss. He's our national director. I've done referrals with him many times, so I know he can take care of our, this type of client. Mm -hmm. But instead of just handing him off, I flew there, set up a lunch meeting so we can meet in person. I can introduce my client to him and then hand him off that way. Right, so because the client needs that level of care. And I literally flew in for lunch and flew out <clears throat> the next day. Wow. Do you find that that trickles down into your everyday <laughs> business? Because you're also still just working with homeowners oh, and non-celebrities yeah. all the oh, time. Yeah, yeah. Hey, our, our motto is million dollar service at all price points. Uh, so our favorite client still is a military home buyer. Mm -hmm. um, people are like, we used to lose business every year because people thought we only did million dollar homes. Right. And that's like, that can be, you know, that's not true. You know, it's like, I think last year our lowest price was $68,000. Wow. And then up to 10.5. I'm like, so we run the gamut. Um, but our favorite client is still the military home buyer, first time home buyer, because it's, there's more pleasure giving the key to somebody like that. Cause they're mm -hmm. working their entire life, getting the house. It was, it's, so it's just a, it's a lot of joy in that. There's, so, right. There's a certain gut. There's a passion that this yeah. got nothing to do with the, the tra transaction or the money or the, yeah. any of that. It's just the smiles on their faces and, you know, they got a piece of American pie, you know. I got to think, though, one of the, I mean, and this is probably why your business is, I'm not going to go into numbers, but yeah. you, you run a very successful real estate business. The people get the benefit of the luxury business that you run because once you understand it, you bring it everywhere. Yeah. And you had to bring that. To, to get the, the athletes and the entertainers. Yeah, yeah. We, we allow, use the same level of service for mm -hmm. all of our clients, no matter what. Um, even if it's a rundown little condo, we're, you're still going to get the same uh, marketing things that we do for everybody. Right. You know? That's fantastic. Yeah. So uh, there was no job in between. You went into the military, mm -hmm. came out. Real estate. Real estate you were already doing, and that yeah. and little detour off to a the Middle detour, East to do, yeah, yeah. To yeah, do drones. The general topics, yeah. What do you, what's something you really like about real estate? What's kept you doing this? Work for myself. I like to empower other people, my team members to mm -hmm. be successful. So I allow them a lot of free reign. You know, I want them to be successful because if they're successful, I am. So I try to help them in every way I can. Um, just real estate is in general. It's like, give me back my life, time, mm -hmm. uh, work for yourself, get up when you want to get up. You know, it's just an amazing life. You can't, I can't get any better. Especially, I mean, i got to hop on a plane, fly to Miami, take care of a client. Yeah. That's a pretty fun job. Yeah, it is. Uh, what's the other side of the coin? What about yeah. real estate? What, is there something that you dislike? Um, probably um, the, least, the least thing I don't like is putting out open house signs. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it. But I have a solution coming for that. So, um, and not just hiring somebody to put them out for me. But there's a lot of th there's little things like that I don't like. But, um, you know. It's a lot of hard work, and it's, I'm talking a lot of hard work. Mm -hmm. It took me years to build what I got now. And there, you know, I, I get at least once a week, I sit down with some person that wants to get their license. Everybody wants to get their license, and I usually talk them out of it. Because <laughs> do. they don't know what's going on. No, I say 95, you know, 5% of the agents make 95% of all the money. Right. That's a fact. You know, right. Because people get in thinking it's going to be easy and glamorous, and they're not seeing me. You know, doing sewer scopes, and, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> up at night. Yeah, uh, up at night worrying about what's going to happen in the transaction. All this gray hair is from real estate, not just Afghanistan. <laughs> <laughs> you, you said something that, um, that I've talked about and believe, but I don't hear it very often. The 80-20 the principle is pretty universal. And it should be 20% of the agents doing 80% of the business, but it's not. It's not, yeah. Real estate is really skewed. Yeah. 5% do 80% of the business. Yeah. It's because it's hard work. And, um, you know, I remember when I first started, I'm like, I'm going to do what all the other agents don't want to do. And that was open houses and things like, mm -hmm. there's still agents that don't like to do open houses and floor time. I started out my career doing that. And I still work with those same clients 20 years later. <laughs> they walked in, you know, I'm like, so I, i still practice what I preach. I right. do open houses every weekend. I do floor time when I can. So I'm not sitting there telling my team to do this. I'm telling them, they should be doing this. Right. This is how you start your business. Yeah. You want to get leads? That's how you get to do it. Okay. And you may be answering this right now, but if you were, if you're meeting with new agents and you say, now let me reword this. You're meeting with a new agent. You say, here's what I wish I had known years ago. I'm going to pass it on to you. Um, 
preparing or planning for taxes. One hundred percent. And I think a lot of agents fall into that that hole. Mm -hmm. They just don't pay enough into the taxes because you know everything has to come out, and they know a lot enough, and then they get in trouble later on. Right. And, and a desperate agent that owes a bunch of taxes, they do desperate things, and mm -hmm. it's it's kind of dangerous. So that's one lesson I learned a long time ago was to make sure. And nobody ever taught me. Nobody ever teaches you how to do finances once you get into real estate. Right. All this money's coming in, but how do you allot it to the right place? How much for taxes? How, you have to get a good bookkeeper, bookkeeper or CPA on your side. Who takes care of that for you. Yeah. You know, it's funny in our, that we're, we're getting ready right now to do the business planning classes. I'm sure you're getting ready to do your business mm -hmm. planning for next year. And that's one of the things I tell them. And when you get a check, let's say a $15,000 commission check, and you think, yay, I yeah. got 15. You did not get 15,000. Yeah. <laughs> you got about 5,000. Mm -hmm. Then you have expenses and taxes and all the other things that we have to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's a lot of it that goes right back out the window. Yeah. People don't realize it though. They just. Right. You know, and it always, it's a trap for new agents every single time, almost, mm. unless you're told otherwise. And you do not want to get on the wrong side of the no, no. So do you have any um, crazy or funny stories in real estate? Mm -hmm. uh, something you've seen that you thought was pretty out of the ordinary? Um, let's see, strange. I, we just sold our house over in Mission Hills that um, was said to be haunted. Really? And, and they, even all the other agents used to tell me, and because uh, I knew the, the one agent has grandfather grew up in the house, so they told me all these stories. And the owner of the house goes, "Hey, I heard. You know, I, do I need to disclose this? That it could be haunted." I'm like, "Write it down. What the old lady down the street told you. Just mm -hmm. write it in the disclosures. You know, you can't prove that stuff." Right. Um, and he wrote it in there, saying the old lady came down the street and said the house is known to be haunted. So he put it in the disclosures, and the buyer that bought the house wanted it because he thought it was haunted. He liked it. <laughs> Because it was right. That became a selling point. <laughs> it was a selling point. <laughs> that's fantastic. But that's also, it's crazy, but true. Yeah. You have to, you better disclose it. Yeah. If you know something or you think of something, somebody mm -hmm. told you something, just tell them. They're not going to hurt the sale. <laughs> Where do you put that in the disclosures, by the way? I, it was just under other things. I other? Think. Yeah, other. <laughs> other. May or may not be haunted. <laughs> yeah. I think they, I forgot what this was. Buyer required to do all due diligence. Yeah. <laughs> and the funny thing is we just resold that house like two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. And this, the people that bought it never had one experience. <laughs> and that's why they bought it. Yeah, so. so did they disclose? Or no, they say, no, it wasn't. Happened, nothing right. happened. So Disappointing, it disappointing it, to say it's it, not haunted. Yeah. So. <clears throat> um, you also, you slid a little one in there, and I don't know if people are catching it, but this is part of why your business is so successful. Yet we just resold that house. That's clients coming back over and over and over. Yep. That's, a, that's our business. That referral business, mm -hmm. I'd say, is 85%. So 85%. You Because you stay in touch. Um, the big thing is the follow-up, fortunes in the follow-up. So we just closed on a house in La Jolla, mm -hmm. 4350 I met them six years ago at an open house. We just now got it. After all these years, I stayed in touch, told them what they need to do to prepare the property. It took them a long time. Mm -hmm. That's all that? <laughs> yeah. But they were... But it's a testament to your follow-up. Yeah, it was a static that, that we got, we waited this long and we were patient and got it done. Wow. How would you say um, your friends from, let's say especially from the military or, or from the days when you were in the the, private, the the contractor, what do they think you do for a living? Like, what do they think your day is like? They think I'm like, they call me Mr. Hollywood and all this other stuff. So like, <laughs> they see me going to L.A. all the time and, mm -hmm. you know, all they see is the the fun stuff on Facebook and social media, like dinners and wine and, you know, client right. stuff, big houses. That's all they see. So they think that's it. <laughs> right. That's the, that's the problem with social media. They yeah, see that. They see all that glamorous stuff. They don't see the, sometimes I'll throw in some of the, like I've posted, you know, mm -hmm. the, the sewer scope, which is the dirtiest part of our work. Right. <laughs> like you want to see what. A, this is what it really part. looks like. <laughs> and I sometimes think about, I mean, in these days you get multiple, multiple offers in some of your homes and you've got to go through every one of those. Find out what's in it, what's not in it. Be able to put it into a comparative nature that yeah. it's spread out all over tables. Mm -hmm. Most people look at it and say, I, "I couldn't make heads or tails of it. And I don't want any part of it." Yeah, regular part of what you have to do. Yeah, exactly. It's and it's a lot of that's a lot of work. Just in that in itself. Maybe start posting that. Yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> here's here's what I really do. Here's a spreadsheet of right. what we have to go through. And Dinner out. in Hollywood sounds fun, but and hope we don't miss anything. Right. Yeah. You can't. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's... So you came out. Did you you were with another broker before Compass? 
What made you decide Compass? Was it that, that, that already existed, this network you wanted to be a part of? Or? That was one of it. But you know what got me in was the concierge program. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Compass had approached me a year before I even joined, but it, I wasn't ready then. And um, I don't think they had the Compass concierge program rolled out. And so to find that, for people who don't know, who are watching. So I missed out on four listings because of Compass concierge. Wow. That was an eye-opener. That's an eye-opener. Yeah. So what Compass concierge offers is I can walk up to a house and go, hey, we need to redo your countertops. We need to paint the house inside and out. We need to stage it. We need to redo the landscaping. And they look at me going, I don't have any money for that. I'm like, that's okay. I'll give you a free loan. Compass will offer you a free loan. Pay for all these improvements. You just pay it back when we sell the house. And they're like, what's the catch? I was like, there is no catch. No, <laughs> what's really? What's the small print? What's the it's catch? It's insane how well it works. It's not, that because the first time I heard it, I said the same thing. Okay, but yeah, really. That's what I said. I was like, show me the fine print. You know, I'm like, what's mm-hmm. really wrong? You know, I said, no, we give you a debit card. You can use it. Hire all your own contractors. I'm like, what? I'm like, it's right. unheard it's of. Not a, it's not a money maker. Don't use our people. Yeah. Why do you think Compass does that? Does because that for? It, it sells quicker. It mm-hmm. has more money in the long run. You know, I've always been a big believer of staging, but, you know, just giving somebody the option that doesn't have the money to pay, stage and all that stuff, giving them that option makes a huge difference. And right. we always net them more money every single time, you know, because of that program. I, I look at that yeah. and think that's probably the single greatest agent enhancing tool. I mean, it's helping the, the sellers, but yeah. But it's getting you in position to help people that you couldn't have done otherwise. Yeah, exactly. We would have to show it in a, you know, a house in a poor condition, which I don't like to do. Right. I have different standards on how I want to present a house, and that's not one of them. I like to get it show, showcase ready as much as possible. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you can't. But. <laughs> There's only so much perfume you can yeah. put on the pig. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so uh, having joined it, uh, Compass has lived up what you need, what you want. You're obviously yeah. developing yeah. numerous... The- Doubled my business in the first year. We're going to double it again this year. You know? Wow. So it's been nuts. Okay, that's the, the proof is in the pudding. And, and grow our, we grew our team, by, you know, several more agents. So And we expanded into Palm Springs. I know you're growing your team because I get to yeah. sign the things. That's pretty, it's pretty impressive how much you're growing. I think we're good right now. We're probably going to keep it where we're at. Um, What's drawing people to your team? <clears throat> just me helping them out to be successful. You know, like that's... You know, a lot of these team leaders will want their name on every single mm-hmm. transaction, and all the listings in the MLS will be their name. I don't do that. I let, I let my team grow their brand, too, within right. my brand. So it's a little bit, I just do it a little bit differently. I think they know. I mm-hmm. think, um, you know, success attracts people. Yeah. You do well, and they want to be part of it because they know that will rub off. They, you can show them. Yeah. And I want to take a back seat for, you know, soon. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll still sell real estate, but I'm going to focus on some commercial stuff, some hotels and things around the world. So, and I'm, and I have people lined up in the team that'll take over, you know, but I'm still going to be part of it, obviously. Right. But you won't have to be so boots on the ground all the time. All right. Yeah. Is there an agent or has there been an agent that you really looked up to in this business? patterned or said I, I oh, like yeah. I mean, my do. mentor was Bill Contreras he was uh, mm-hmm. he was with Prudential back then Steve Games right in Fairbanks Ranch and he's the one that really taught me everything however he just also let me do a lot on my own like I was constantly asking him questions because he wasn't pres- giving me answers <laughs> and so I was hungry you know he goes I right. like you because you got you goes, you should get your license because you have your PhD I'm like I don't have my PhD he goes yeah you're poor hungry and driven and <laughs> that's you know, good the first house I ever sold was Three million seven hundred and fifty thousand. That was your first home. It was. It took me eight months, but and it was just a guy in a ratty T-shirt that walked into the house from, and and I took him, showed him properties, and we were in escrow the, that weekend. Wow! First rule of real estate is don't prejudge anyone by the way they look, what they drive, or, or anything. You just don't know. This guy turned in to be, you know, it's the same thing what happened when I start working with celebrities. <laughs> My biggest client was Rock Nation, and I didn't prejudge this kid that was buying a house in Lakeside. Mm-hmm. $400,000 house turned into working with the biggest music celebrities in the world because I didn't prejudge him. Wow. I took his word for it. I, you know, I trust but verify. Right, <laughs> right. And then you give them, like you said, the service that you would give, yeah. doesn't matter who they are. Yeah. I may have never heard of you. You're going to get the service I give to the most famous people. Yeah, and his mom saw that, and she, she's the one that, really yeah. changed our life <laughs> it really comes down to that it comes down to who you are and how you're going to treat other people yeah um what would you say is 
uh, a perception of real estate or real estate agents that the public has that you know is not true? Greedy, used car salesman. <laughs> you get this. Okay, just one. <laughs> yeah. It's just pe people think that we live this glamorous life and we're making all this money. They don't see all the background stuff, the hard work that goes into it. They don't see the number of hours a day we put into it. And then they don't see where all the money goes. Right, right. It does That's not go to you. Thing. They don't see any of that. They yeah. don't understand what a broker split is. They don't understand that we have to pay taxes and all of our own marketing and all of our own expenses. They don't see E and O insurance. There's so many expenses with each transaction. Mm -hmm. They just don't see that. All they see is like, oh, you got a big commission check. Yeah, but half of it's gone. Right. It I, looks big, yeah, but it looks, <laughs> it's not. It's, yeah. All right. Todd, if you had... Um, you have a billboard. You get to put up a billboard over on Interstate 8, and it can say anything you want. <laughs> what would it say? Hmm. You know what? I don't know. Uh, I'd probably just put our tagline on, you know, just, you know, million-dollar service at all price points to just stick to our, our, um, our existing marketing. Stay consistent. Yeah, our okay. brand. I mean, there's a lot of funny memes I would like to put. Right. But, um, okay. Can you give us one of those? <laughs> you have for... to see them. They're visual. Oh, they're memes. Oh, okay. <laughs> memes, yeah. I'm always making those. <laughs> All right. You can have dinner with any three people, living or dead. Who would you have dinner with? Um, probably the band members of Queen. Really? Yeah. I think it would be, yeah. I mean, Freddie Mercury. I love, yeah. Or, Just... Pink, or Pink Floyd. Like, I, it's all music people mostly. But mm -hmm. <laughs> And that was one of my favorite bands. So, so there's a draw. I didn't know about that. You're you have a real draw to music, a real passion. Yeah, so, I mean, somewhat. Yeah, I mean, I've always liked music. Everybody does. That music brings people together. Food, music, mm -hmm. and drink. <laughs> That's what brings everybody together. Yeah. Um, is it with these certain brands you're mentioning the the history, or they were there when? It's how I was things... growing, growing up. I wore those albums out. Albums, vinyl. <laughs> albums, yeah. <laughs> We'll put it. We'll put a thing underneath that runs. Yeah. that says what an album is. Eight, eight track tape. You know. <laughs> oh, jeez. Eight track <laughs> tapes. I remember those. Um, okay. One of the things I do when I'm in coaching a lot is is talk about I am. Like the most important words in your world are any words that follow mm -hmm. I am. So complete that sentence. I am grateful. Grateful. Gratitude is the attitude you should be having because um, um, giving out. Being a connector, mm -hmm. you know, but gratitude is like just being grateful for everything in your life, no matter what. It'll come back to you tenfold, you know, helping somebody out when they need help. Don't expect anything in return. Hmm. It'll come back to you a thousand times. It might not be right now. It might be five years from now, but treat those pre people. Listen. That's another big lesson is listening. Um, I am a better listener mm -hmm. now. I used, I used to struggle at listening. Hmm. So. One thing I learned from Mark Cuban, when we take a meeting, he would write at the top of his page, listen, the word listen. That was his biggest lesson. So I've always, I still do it. I write wow. it on the top pad of a notepad when I'm taking a meeting. I just put listen, and I'll sit there. Because if I don't see it, I'll try to interrupt. Because <laughs> there's a big difference. People think listening versus actively paying attention to what a person's saying. Yeah. And I look at other people that do it really well, and I'm like, I want to do that. I like, man, you're good. You're a good listener. <laughs> I like Mark Cuban. Listen, the, the one I was taught, I always put at the top or I put on the wall and back of me is wait, W-A-I-T. Why am I talking? Oh, yeah. That's a good one, too. I've Which heard is, that before. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Hard to go wrong with Mark Cuban, though. Yeah, it's true. All right. So uh, so I have the 10 questions that I that I stole from inside the actor's studio. Okay. Actually, I changed a few of them because we're family yeah. friendly. But All right. These are the 10 questions I end up all these interviews with. Okay. What is your favorite word? I think we already talked about that. Gratitude. Gratitude. Yeah. I would have been surprised if it was any other word. Yeah. What is your least favorite word? <laughs> Moist. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a joke. <laughs> um, I'm not supposed to be involved in this part. Just ask the question. What sound or noise do you love? A growl of a good muscle car, you know, mm -hmm. or I, I can't go wrong with jet jet noise because I grew up on an aircraft carrier pretty much. F-14 Tomcat and afterburner. That's a good noise. That's a good noise. <laughs> what sound or noise do you hate? Drill at the dentist. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I have to wear headphones at the dentist. <laughs> hmm. 
if you could have one superpower, what would it be and why? <clears throat> be able to speak every language of the world. Why would you choose that as a superpower? Because, of that, because I love to travel, and I, would, I think that would just be able to communicate with every single person in the world in their native <laughs> language, I think it would be, just be cool. <clears throat> Again, we see why you're so successful. Connect with people. Yeah. I like connecting with people. I mean, that's been a hashtag for a long time, be a connector. Mm -hmm. Whether it helps you or not, now or later, just be a connector. Just know you're always paying in. It's always it's, good. And it doesn't have to be real estate. It could be, you know, this guy needs a, a recommendation for this, or I know somebody can help you get this job. At some, I was talking to somebody about you, and they said that you were a hell of a resource. Yeah. That's how they called you, a res great resource. Yeah, I always have, a, you know, a big portfolio of mm -hmm. just everything. Whatever you need, yeah. I got a recommendation. Yeah, usually. <laughs> and if I don't, I know where to get it. That's the key. Mm -hmm. You don't have to have all the answers. No. Just know where to get them. That, that's the beauty of this business. <laughs> how do you cure a hangover? <laughs> I saw that in your questions. So like, just drink lots of water right before you go to bed the day before. Huh, that sounds There's easy. no cure. <laughs> no. <laughs> you can drink all the water you want. What we used to do in the Navy is in the mornings, if you showed up, <laughs> go s just take liquid oxygen from the, F, you know, the mm -hmm. Tomcats. You <laughs> breathe in liquid oxygen. It was, that was pure oxygen always helps. <laughs> wow. I heard that before that part of the hangover is, is we're not breaking down oxygen right from yeah, the alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you have access to an F-14 and you're hungover, yeah, that's the... Uh, or any... Any naval aircraft. Any naval aircraft. Yeah. <laughs> it simplifies it for the rest of us. <laughs> um, what profession other than your own would you like to attempt? Uh, probably a pilot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I probably would have been a pilot, but I'm, my eyesight was too bad. <laughs> I couldn't do it back in the day. Now they allow you to get LASIK and stuff, but before that was in existence. Do you ever think about getting a pilot's license now? I have thought about that. Yeah. Yeah. No, I was just saying, I just haven't done it yet. Okay. Should have yeah. went back to the, uh, I didn't ask you if you could take on any project and know you wouldn't fail. Hmm. I'm trying to think. Probably just like a big development deal, you know, like, mm. you know, because we got a couple coming up and I've never done one. So I'm just up for the challenge. Love to jump in. Yeah. All right. What profession would you not like to do? Moving. Moving companies, painters, I, both those I detest. <laughs> I don't know how people do that for a living. <laughs> Thank God somebody does. Yeah, exactly. Where's your favorite spot in San Diego? <clears throat> favorite spot? That's where I say Balboa Park because we spent a lot of time up there. Hmm. Different areas, you know, the museums and the restaurants and things like that. But you're going to have a different spot every day. Yep, yep. Number 10, if heaven exists... What would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? <laughs> That's hard. I didn't look at that one. Uh, I guess welcome and, you know, meet the rest of your family that have gone before you. Mm. Here's your family. Yeah. I love it. Thank you for doing this. Yeah, you're welcome. It was really fun. Ladies and gentlemen, here's Todd Armstrong. <laughs> In the flesh. Working on the plot and the scheme, the true stock trademark is at the edge of your dreams. I'm talking one, one shot for the kill, the breeze cut, freeze up, straight drop and the chills. I'm talking, taking over pieces and shares of all.